and progesterone being produced by the lining of the womb, which either tells the lining of the womb to accept the egg or to reject it and go through the process of menstruation. So what we found was, when I looked into it in a lot of detail, and that's all in the Tutankhamun prophecies, because the ancient civilizations were well aware of this uh, mechanism, what we find is that as the sun spins every 28 days, showers the earth with particles, just as we said before, the particles go up and down every one second, the magnetic field varies every one second, this affects the pineal gland in the female brain, the female brain affects the production of melatonin, the timing hormone, and that affects the production of oestrogen and progesterone, and that's why females menstruate every 28 days. Of course, sometimes you say, ah, oh, well, sometimes it's 32 days and 24. If this goes round, what you'll find is you'll have 28 days, 28 days, 28 days, 32 days, 28, 28, 28, 34 days, 28, 28. So it'll go backwards and forwards as the North Pole slides through the equator. Now, there have been experiments to show that when females are placed on the ground, this was one in New Scientist in 1989, showing uh, a student, Stephanie Follini, and NASA placed her underground in a cave in New Mexico. She was awake for 35 hours, and then she slept for 10 hours. She lost 17 pounds in weight, and her menstrual cycle stopped. Now, this is very interesting stuff, because now we know if we put pregnant females underground or females underground, they can't have babies. They can't reproduce without the sun. And that's why this is so important. What happens if we put a dog underground? Maybe the dog can't reproduce. What happens if we put a mouse underground? What happens if we put the AIDS virus underground? Would the virus stop replicating? We know when we go out into the sunshine, we get herpes, the cold source, the blister comes out because of the solar radiation. Take away the radiation, we take away the fertility. And this is one of the reasons why we can never leave the planet. I'll go on to that in a second. Now, why don't all females menstruate at the same time? Well, I didn't knock this up over the weekend. Okay. And I assure you, if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. But that's a 16-hour version. Now, imagine it like this. Imagine a carousel where the sun is the roof of the carousel. And we have four horses. And let's say you're the manager of the, of the ride, and you stand here, and a female comes along, and she takes her place on the ride, and she sits on the horse. Then the, the, the manager moves the carousel around 90 degrees, and this horse goes up in the air, but the next horse comes down to the ground, and the next passenger gets on board. The manager moves the carousel around another 90 degrees, and passenger number three gets on the, the third horse at the back, and then passenger four gets on, and the ride begins. They're all going up and down at different times, but they're all going up and down every 28 days. And that's what I call asynchronous synchronization. Another effect of the sun is, that, as I mentioned earlier, the, around the, uh, because the equator is rotating more quickly than the North Pole and the South Pole, the magnetic field around the equator becomes bent. And in 1962, two engineers, Babcock and Leighton, suggested a process that was going on, saying, well, it looks like the, the magnetic field that goes from north to south is getting wound up around the sun. It's bursting out into these spots. If you look at the sun, you get these black spots. They're magnetic fields. They're magnetism bursting out of the sun, but we see them as black areas. And they're understood pretty well nowadays. When I was at Cranfield and I started to look at the sunspot cycle, I made a graph out of... Uh, asking the question, when would those three parameters be back together again? And I started the graph by hand, and after about five months, I gave up. So I said to the girl in the computer center, <clears throat> put these figures into the, compu into the computer. 37 days, 26 days, 365.25 days. When will they come back together? She said, well, that's easy. If this is 37, and that's 26, that's 962. And if that's a year, it's 962. I said, well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> but this got, I want to see the graph 
as it progresses, because I suspect there's a lower common denominator, and they actually come together before that. I don't know when it's going to be, maybe after 500 years, might be 300 years. I can't see unless I've got a graph, and I can't work out the lowest common denominator because of the fractions involved, the decimal points. So I put them into a computer, and the computer said, OK, we, every 87 days when we took those measurements, we'll have a time interval. So we've got 87, 87, 87, 87, 87, 87, 87. So after 700 days, if we do a graph of the world going around and a graph of the combined magnetic field going around, take one from the other, we come out with this difference graph. The sun, I call it the sunspot graph. And after one, two, three, four, five, six of these, it looks like we get three positives and three negatives, and that is the 11-year sunspot cycle, because we know sunspots come and go every 11 and a half years if we look at the sun. So I looked at the graph, and I saw a few problems coming here, because I could see here, if we look at the shape of this, we've got M, M, V, and then we've got a sort of crown, sort of crown, and a spiky crown. So I thought, if I can find out that pattern, where it is, they must all begin again, because it's the same pattern. So I looked and looked and looked, and after 187 years, they all start off together. Then we get the, the, the crown, the crown, the crown, and so on. The M, the M, the M, and the upside down crown, and so on. And then I noticed something quite strange. I noticed these, although this was 700 days, 700, 700, 700, this one was 787, 787. This one was 787. There were anomalies in the graph. And when I started to reconcile these anomalies, and that took me some time, like about two years, to figure it through, I realized that the sun, although it should be positive at the top and negative at the bottom, the equator should be neutral. But what I found was that it's actually warped. It's like an old record. This is, it got broken on the way here today, I'm afraid. But that was an old pop record. I think it was, you are my sunshine. Or something like that. <laughs> now, what we know is that this, they call it the neutral sheet. The neutral sheet is warped. We know that. The physicists know that. The astronomers know that. What this graph tells me, which nobody knew, is that every 187 years, that neutral warp moves. Because the graph tells me that after analyzing it for two years. And after another 187 years, this one moves again. And after another 187 years. And in fact, so now we have four variables. We have the pole, the equator, the world, and the neutral warp. So when will they all be back together? Well, the answer to that is 18,169 years. But what did it mean? So I took another look. <laughs> well, what it means is that something's interfering with this neutral warp on the sun. We would expect the warp to follow the red line, but it's, expect the equator of the sun's magnetic field to be neutral along the red line, but we know it's warped and tilted. And if we look at the, the warp and the tilt, I know these cycles every 11 and a half years are being interfered with along the length. They're being interfered with here, 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 and here on my graph. And when we have a look at the, the sunspot cycles itself over the centuries, we can see that the sunspot amplitude is going up and down in sympathy with this neutral warp. So I thought, well, that's interesting, because if that warp's moving, when will they come back together? What's actually happening? So I had a look at the warp then, and I put, started off with the warp as it is, and I put another one on top, and I said, OK, what happens if the warp moves every 187 years, little bit by bit, like that? It's moving 187 years, like, like so on. And uh, what I discovered was that, excuse me, the magnetic field of the sun, as this moves here, see these arrows? If we put them on top of each other, those are the arrows showing the direction of the magnetic field, that way, that way, that way. If we move them like this, over 187 years, we see the magnetic field of the Earth, of the sun, reverses. It goes from negative to positive. Now, I can calculate how long that will take, simply by putting those the, the bits that interfere on together. So in other words, these are the bits that interfere here, 
And I'm saying, when does the black bar hit the 